If you read the Gospel of Mark, you might have noticed something unusual with the last chapter. The last half of the last chapter of the Gospel of Mark is typically marked in different Bibles in different ways, trying to set aside these verses. For example, I was reading the NASB translation, and they put the last verses, after verse 9, or after verse 8, beginning with verse 9, they put the rest of the chapter in brackets. And they include some footnotes. The footnotes say that the earliest manuscripts don't contain these verses. Well, it's like half of a chapter. In fact, it's everything in the Gospel of Mark after the resurrection. Everything that Jesus does after he's resurrected is contained in the last half of the last chapter of the book. But the footnotes will tell you that the origin, the oldest versions of Mark that we have don't even contain these verses. So what's going on with this translation? I mean, I remember the first hearing about this and thinking, well, that's a huge chunk. You know, typically when we look at textual variants, uh, issues with the or oldest copies of the Bible, most of the, most of the variants are just spelling issues, um, a, a word added or subtracted here or there. But here we've got an entire half of a chapter, including all of what Mark is telling us about the Jesus' activities after his resurrection. And this is not in the earliest manuscripts. So what's going on? I mean, the, the truth of it is, is that the oldest manuscripts we have don't contain these verses. We don't have the original copy of Mark. We don't know what happened to it. Likely it wore out over time. The, the gospel was probably shared by so many churches, read so many times, and in often some uh, not that great of conditions. I mean, a lot of early Christian churches were had to be secretive, had to be underground, that potentially th this just wore out because it wasn't being taken very good care of. Or maybe it's lost somewhere and it still exists, but we've never discovered it through archaeology. So in order to figure out what the original said, we use ancient copies. And we do have... Uh, many old copies of Mark, but the oldest ones don't have these verses. So it would seem that the original version of Mark didn't didn't contain these the story that the original Gospel of Mark must have ended after the resurrection, but before all these other events. Well, what's going on? You know, if that's true, if we know from all these ancient manuscripts. That these verses are not in the oldest versions. I mean, why is it still in our Bible? I remember being in church and uh, hearing pastors say, well, hey, you know, what's great about our modern translations is it includes a footnote to let you know that these weren't in the original manuscripts. And when I would hear that, I, I kind of assumed that, oh, well, what you mean by that is that nowadays we know that it wasn't in the original Bible. You know, because in modern translations, there's a footnote. But what about older translations? I mean, for... 2,000 years, people thought that this was scripture, and then all of a sudden we realized it wasn't. So now we put a footnote. Well, that maybe that was a bad assumption on my part, because the fact of the matter is that we've known about this issue essentially throughout the entire history of the church. There are ancient church fathers that are already ta that talk about this very early in history. Talk about hey, uh, all the oldest copies don't contain these verses. So read these with a grain of salt. It doesn't seem like their originals contain these verses. This isn't something new. Throughout church history, we've known that these verses are not in the oldest versions of Mark. Well, then that kind of, I mean, I guess that sets my mind at ease that, okay, at least it wasn't a, a secret. At least this wasn't a new discovery. We just, all of a sudden, through a new discovery, lost a portion of the Bible. But now this creates another problem. If we've essentially always known that the oldest versions of Mark doesn't have these verses and that... Very likely, the original version of Mark did not include these verses. Well, then why are we still printing them in our Bibles? Even a modern-day translation will include these, either bracketed with some type of footnote. Maybe the verses themselves are put in the footnote, so they're not in the main text, but they're still there. I mean, why are we even including this if we've always known that there was problems with these verses? Well, here we also have a... Um, a unusual problem and that's that early christians in the early 100s you know jesus dies in 30 and by the early 100s there are some christians that are quoting these verses or at least one of these verses gets quoted in the, this early time period this is just after the life of the apostles you know we know the apostle john lives till about 
in the 90s. So now in the early 100s, his students or the, his student students are still around and they're, now we've got people who are quoting this verse. So what's the deal? It, it, this doesn't appear to be a extremely late addition. It's not somebody hundreds of years later throwing in a story about Jesus into Mark. It looks like it's a story that is included early. Our goal here is to figure out what was the original message of, of the Bible. And then we want to, we, we want to do best reconstruct the original message. And then we put that in our modern day Bibles for Christians to read. I think it's because of the early appearance of these verses that the verses have never been fully removed from the Bible. There's a couple uh, ways we can look at where these verses might've come from. Number one is these, these verses do not drastically change uh, any theological point. You know, this Mark, if Mark ends in, in verse eight of the last chapter, then Jesus is resurrected and all his post resurrection appearances are covered in other books of the Bible. So it's not as though we didn't have a story about Jesus during this time anyway. So the, the biggest thing is that regardless whether these verses are in or out, uh, no theological point is lost. There's nothing that Christians believe that it is lost and it doesn't add anything to Christianity either. But because they're quoted so early, I suppose it's possible that the original actually contained these verses and at some point they were removed and we just, the oldest versions we have include the removal. I don't think that that's as likely, but I guess it's possible and that might be a good reason to keep these verses around at least to allow a modern day Christian to analyze them and study them for themselves. I think also it's very possible that a, uh, a scribe very early in history takes Mark's original gospel and adds essentially an epilogue. You know, it might be um, confusing to, to wonder why would Mark end at the resurrection when we know Jesus makes appearances after the resurrection and he does stuff, why does it end there? Potentially somebody comes and it adds as an epilogue, hey, by the way, Jesus appears and does some things after his resurrection, the end. It's not a ton of verses, but just to throw in there for the Christian reader, hey, by the way, there was a little bit of extra stuff. This stuff that basically you can read about in other gospel accounts of Jesus. We do see this with um, biblical books, especially Old Testament books, where we would, where one book is ascribed mostly to a single author, but that author, uh, their death is included in the story, like the story of Moses. Moses is typically thought to be the writer of most of, if not all of the uh, first five books of the Bible, but Moses' death is included. So at some point he must've died and somebody who is working alongside him comes in and adds the ending of the book to include Moses' death and what happens immediately afterwards as like an addendum, as an epilogue. So is it this an early scribe who maybe is even a close student of Mark who knows that there's a little bit more to the story and just wants to throw in there, hey, by the way, there's a little bit extra. It's possible. We don't know why these verses were added or subtracted, but we do know that whatever the, the change occurs very early in history. Some, some skeptics would claim that you know, Christianity changes over time and that Jesus isn't even considered God for hundreds of years. Well, that's not, this is not the case with this uh, last half of the last chapter of Mark. This is not something that's added hundreds of years later to change the theological outlook of, of Christianity. But we do know that these verses are not in the oldest manuscripts. And even the ancient Christians living just a couple hundred years um, after the book of Mark is written, even they are writing saying, hey, we know that the, the oldest copies that we have access to, even at that time, didn't have these verses. So that's why these verses are put in brackets. I think the biggest thing for us to think about is we want to be clear and honest about our manuscripts. That's what your Bible is trying to do when it puts things in brackets or adds a footnote, puts the verses in the footnote. The, the translators who are producing the Bible want to be honest with you so you can know, hey, there might be some issues with these verses. But the other thing we should keep in mind is that these verses make no theological change to Christianity. If you, for the rest of your life, never read past the eighth verse, your Christianity is not changed. If you decide to include these verses and every time you read Mark, you always read the end and you treat them as gospel, as scripture, 
no no change to your Christianity is going to occur. There's no uh, there's no major change. These verses that simply refer to events that we know occurred through the other gospel sources. So I don't think we need to lose sleep over these verses. But I think it is important for us to know the history of these verses because it's an easy verse for a skeptic to challenge a Christian on to point out, hey, there's a problem with your Bible that based on this, all the Bible shouldn't be trusted. As Christians, we need to have a, a grasp of what's going on with these verses and be ready for a response. These verses do not um, add anything to our Christianity and they don't take anything away from our trust in the Bible. The Bible, the Gospel of Mark is still reliable even though we know at some point these verses may have been added even early in history.